You may wish to use the Open Background Graphic feature in BuzzEdit to create iron-on transfers on which to place embroidery designs. BuzzEdit is the perfect program to use as a template maker. So let us try. I, first of all, I have opened in the Janome format, so format, a giant hoop at all. I'm going to choose to open my background graphic, and it has selected the one I was recently using, and notice that I've decided it's a vase, and I'm going to place some bees on this. I would like to place it, as opposed to being in the center of the design, or center of the hoop, as I should say, I've chose to move it further over to the right, so as not so as for easier placement of my designs on it. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to simply go to File, Insert Design, and select my little bee. It asks where I'd like to place it, and I'm, I would like to place it at the stitch cursor, and that puts it in the center of the hoop. I'm going to move it up here so that it's close to the top, and I now need to assign them to a hoop in space. So I'm just going to drag them into the hoop and release my mouse button, and they've been assigned to this hoop section. So I'm going to place this little design here, and I can choose to insert another design, or I can simply copy and paste this B and put him into a different hoop. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to place him down by this one. I can manipulate this design by rotating him, if I'd like. Let me move him a little further away. And I'd like to maybe place a, a B over on this side. So I'm going to just simply click on a different hoop, go to File, Insert Design, and I'll select that B again. Insert at the stitch cursor. And this time I probably need to flip him around just a little bit so that I can have him facing this flower. So let me go to the Tools, Flip, and choose to flip him horizontally. Now I can freehand rotate him by grabbing onto the box and just onto the circle and rotating him just a bit. Put him down by this flower. And I'd like to place one up here, so let me just copy and paste him and move him up to this flower here. He's coming in for a landing. Now as a, I could assign him to a different hoop, but I'm going to use the Move Hoop tool here. And that allows me to click on this red hoop boundary and drag it up so that it encompasses both of these hoops so I can customize where I want it to be situated. For I can continue to add designs to this layout, but I'm just going to select these extra hoops and delete them by hitting the delete key on my keyboard just for some general housekeeping because I've finished adding designs. I'm only going to have two hoops in this particular layout. The top hoop and then this right hoop on this side. Now I'm going to sort some of these colors so I don't have to change my thread so often and to do that I simply double click on the color to select it, click hold, drag and drop it in, space, in time here. I could use the one button color sort at the top but I need to retain the layering of these designs and the order of which they're stitched. There's two sections of black in each B and I need to make sure that they stitch out appropriately so that my the integrity of the design isn't changed. So that I quickly combined all those colors and I have my two hoops. I'm ready to print my template. First of all, let me save my work. So I'm going to save and I can change it to my flower vase with bees. Save. And now I'm ready to send these two files to the machine. First, let's go and print the template. I'm going to go to File, Print Template, and I'm going to use my virtual printer, and I'm going to choose to print not only the hoop, but the stitches, so it's going to show me the designs, it's going to show me the background graphic, a rectangle showing the hoop frame, a cross through it so that I can line up my designs, and a tick marks. This is just going to be for my template. So I'm going to click OK, and this is just going to print on the computer, on the screen here in a virtual printing program for you. This would normally you'd print this on paper, but you can see that it has printed a hoop boundary so that you would trim, and this is the top part of the hoop and the left part. It will show you, let's zoom in so you can see the dashed lines. These are the little hoop boundaries, 
and the needle positions so that when you send these designs to the machine it will print them out exactly. It also will print, I have next page, there's four pages to this template actually that you'd have to tape together. Now that shows me a template but if I want to create an iron-on transfer to use uh, these bees on I can go to file print template and I want to choose to print it I don't want to print the stitches or the hoops because I don't want that to show I just want to print the background graphic and to print it as a mirror image so that I could print it on the photo transfer paper and iron it on my fabric before I hoop the fabric if I were going to print this directly on fabric, if I had that special paper to go through, I would not choose to print it as a mirror image. But since I'm doing a photo transfer, I'm going to choose to print as a mirror image. And I would normally print this on high, but since we're printing it virtually here on the computer, I will choose to print it low so that it's faster. Now when I zoom in to see my, whoops, my print my paper this is what's actually going to print and you can see let's zoom in on these little flowers it has put little crosshairs where your needle will be these are where the designs are going to be so that you can see exactly as a double check when you print this on your iron-on transfer paper these little crosshairs are going to be where your needles will line up and you're ready to go and do some fancy embellishing on this simple iron-on transfer